This video is about curve fitting and regression analysis. All we are going to discuss in this video is discussed more extensively in one of my CDs called Excel 2007 for Scientists and also in my book Excel 2007 for Scientists. We are going to, uh, to try curve fitting on a very simple situation. The situation is as follows. We have in column A the percentage of GC pairs in a DNA string. In the column B we observe, we measure the temperature of denaturation. And when we plot this in an XY graph you will see that there is almost a linear relationship between the percentage of GC pairs and the temperature of denaturation. The dots are observations. The line through it is a trend line. If you want to know how to create such a trend line, I'm going to delete it for a moment. You just right click on any observation point, add a trend line, and then the problem is what, what kind of trend line? That's what we are going to discuss soon. Is it really linear? It looks it, but sometimes looks can be very deceiving. So let's assume it's linear. I would recommend that you also include display the equation on the chart and display the R squared value on the chart. And there is that line that I showed you before. The equation says you can calculate y, which is the dependent variable, if you multiply the independent variable x by a certain slope and you add an intercept. R squared is a measurement for how close the relationship is. R, the character R, stands for correlation, so this is the correlation coefficient to the power of 2, a squared correlation coefficient. It varies between minus 1 and plus 1, so this one is a very highly positive relationship. It's almost one. The question is now, is that the correct curve? What are we going to do? We are going to calculate that line. And we do that in a new column C. We are going to find out what would be the temperature of denaturation if this were a real linear relationship. It should be somewhere around 79 for the first one and around 110, etc. How do we calculate that? I, I could use this formula, plus 69, etc. Usually it's, if it's much easier, and you wouldn't even know this formula, if you use the trend function. The trend function is a very powerful function in Excel. It returns the number in a linear trend. It is what they call a multiple cell array function. That means you select multiple cells ahead of time, and it's going to return all the individual predicted values or estimated values. Known y's are b2 through b16. The known axes are a1 through a16. And notice because this is a trend function we had selected multiple cells. It is a multi -cell, cell array function. Formula results gives you only the first value, 79.8. We expect, we observed 79, we expect 79.8 if there is really a linear relationship. Notice here that this one gives you multiple results. This is the result for cell 1, cell 2, cell 3. How do we get all the results and not just this one, not by clicking on OK, but holding the Control and Shift key at the same time and press Enter. We got all the predicted values if there is a linear relationship between column A values and column B values. The question is, how far are these predictions off? So we are going to calculate that in a new column. And the difference between observed and predicted is called residual. So we need a column of residuals. So you can do 
cell B minus cell C or cell C minus cell B. Observation minus trend. I'm going to do cell B2 minus C2. would like to get that formula in all the selected cells. This is not an array function, of course, so I just use control enter. And these are the residuals. Sum of all these residuals should be zero. So how do we check whether this is really a linear relationship? In order to do so, we are going to plot the residuals in a new chart, in a new graph. I created this graph already. If you want to see how that can be done easily, we are plotting the residuals versus the x values. So if you want to do that on your own, you select the values in column A, you hold the control key and click on the first residual value, hold control shift again, you select both of those columns, insert an XY chart, and this is what you would get. I did that already, so I'm going to escape. It is this graph. How, how do we know that there is a linear relationship? If there is a linear relationship, the residuals should be scattered all over the place randomly. This the perfect test. I think there is one more step that should be done. We should standardize the residuals. Equals the residual value in D2 divided by the standard deviation, in this case for a sample, standard deviation S, of all the residuals, D2, control shift arrow down through D16, make sure that that D2 through D16 doesn't change in the next cell down into D3 to D17, so you lock both cells by pressing the F4 key. When you close the standard deviation function and you put that formula in all the selected cells, if control enter, you get these standardized residuals. I plotted them already for you in this graph. They should all be between 2 and minus 2 and they should be scattered over the plot randomly. There should not be a detectable pattern in the distribution of those dots. Let's tackle now a non-linear relationship. Here we measured the time in seconds and the speed of the ball that was dropped. Plots give you the curve, and when you try a residual, uh, if when you try a trend line in there that is linear, you get a pretty high R squared value and the following formula. Probably your scientific gut feelings tell you already that this is probably not linear, but, but how could you test it? Let's do it one more time. We are going to calculate what the linear outcome would be. So we call the trend function again. The known y's are b2, control shift arrow down through b20. The known x's a2, control shift arrow down a20. Don't click on OK because this is a multi-cell array formula, so control shift enter. These were the values we would have expected if it were a linear relationship. They happen to coincide with the line that we made in the graph. How do we test whether that is correct? We calculate the residuals again. These are the residual values. What is the next step? We standardize those residuals. Equals the residual we found divided by the standard deviation for a sample based on D2, control shift arrow down D20. Make sure you make that absolute by locking it with F4. And control enter puts the standardized residuals in there. You see, in this case, you see the big difference between residuals and standardized. Standardized makes much more sense. Notice that you got a parabola pattern. They are not scattered all over the place randomly. There is a very clear pattern. 
when we are talking about a parabola, we can almost guarantee that this is a polynomial relationship. In, in the book I will show you different kind of patterns that help you to determine is it linear, polynomial, logarithmic, exponential, power, or whatever, or maybe sigmoid. In this case, we got a curve that has a parabola downwards. Why is it downwards? That depends on how you calculated the residuals. If you had done, instead of B2 minus C2, C2 minus B2, you would get the opposite, of course. So it's a polynomial relationship. And I showed you here that when you make that trend line, and you would have made it pa polynomial, you can choose the order, second order, third order polynomial, whatever. In this case, a second order polynomial gives us a beautiful R squared value. That if you would ever want to test this again, and in real life you really should, the estimated value would be, instead of trend, you would use this formula this time. You calculate the residuals, residuals again, and then you standardize those residuals. And that pattern should be completely random again. So, how do you find out more? Either buy my CD or my book. It depends on what kind of learner you are. The CD gives you 1800 slides. If you, that is not your kind of learning, go for the book. The book has a great index at the end. It has at, at each chapter uh, a series of exercises. So again, you can test yourself. And we are the same in their table of contents. They have general spreadsheet techniques. They tell you how to do data analysis including array formulas. We discussed one array formula here. There is much more on array formulas in the book and on the CD. How do you plot your data? How to do curve fitting, statistical analysis, the student's t-test, the chi-test, how to test for significance, and how do you calculate margins of error. And my last name is pronounced as Verschuren. You can find these tools in MrExcel.com or on Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble or whatever place you prefer.